Hi everyone, Tams here. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I transform my letter writing desk into a witchy workspace for Halloween. Now, I love Halloween. It's probably my favorite holiday, mostly because I get an excuse to do something that I think I miss my calling on. I think one of the coolest jobs in the world would be to design sets for shows like Penny Dreadful and uh, The Witches of East End and, uh, you know, Practical Magic. I love those shows and movies because I love the props. I love the lighting. Um, it's spooky and eerie, but there's just something about it that really attracts me and I enjoy uh, seeing if I can recreate some of the props that I see in those movies and shows. One of the other things I love about Halloween is I really challenge myself to try to create decorations that cost very little money. To give you an example, one year I was asked to decorate a Halloween party for a local club that got together and my budget was $12. Um, so let's just say I really used the Dollar Tree and one of the things I bought was several, I bought several sheets of black construction paper and I cut out tons of bat silhouettes and a couple of spooky tree silhouettes and we completely transformed a background and a podium that was being used for that club's meeting for Halloween. So you can do it. I love to test myself and see what I can do with just what I have or with just very little money. So let me show you what I've done to my letter writing desk. Okay, here is the letter writing desk that I have converted into a witchy workspace. If you are interested in what this desk normally looks like, I did a video several months ago before I converted this front room into my office, and I will link that below. There has, hasn't been much of a change since I made that video. So let's see what's on the desk. We've got the infamous garden grimoire. I have an entire video on this and how I made it. I made this with things I had already around the house. I did not buy this. Of course, you gotta have candles and some Palo Alto, which smells divine when it's burning. You also need to have, what well, you don't need to, but a good witch usually has a book of mirrors and a book of mirrors is really just a journal. So I have my current journal and my great aunt's journal from the 1940s. Your, your writing utensil can be your wand. <laughs> In the case of this witch, it's definitely her wand. And I have these beautiful hand carved pencils and this jar. These were given to me many years ago for Christmas by my niece and nephew. I'm not sure where they found them. I think my sister-in-law probably found it at like a home goods type store. They're absolutely adorable, but if you look closely, you see um, they are pencils and they can be used to write with and they're wrapped in these wonderful little burlap pieces and doilies. Okay, the first shelf is really just my fountain pen inks. Um, I do have some little tea cups here that remind me of a cauldron with a feather, uh, some paperweights, and then I have this great uh, needlepoint cross stitch that I bought many years ago from um, a pen pal over in Europe, and I will link her shop below. I have no idea if she still sells those but uh, she's called Manic Monday. Okay, then on the second shelf, I have my witchy books, and I have an entire video on how I made these books, if you're interested in that. And of course, you gotta have a black candle. Always gotta have black candles for spell work. And then on the top shelf, I have these two bottles, which are supposed to represent sun charged water and moon charged water and really all these are um i think these are gorgeous bottles and they are a bottle of vodka and gin made here in florida by a company called old saint pete i love their bottles and so i just saved the empty bottles and filled them up with water 
and if you do want to charge them you just put the sun charge water underneath the sunshine and you put the moon water underneath the full moonlight overnight there you go and then of course we have my spell box so let's take a look at what's inside there all right so here is our spell box you may recognize this this is actually my art supply wooden box that i did a video on several weeks ago i'll link it below but for halloween it has been transformed into a spell box so what is in here what do i have in here of course i have my sage and the abalone shell uh, i don't know if you know about that but uh, you can if you burn your sage, you can snuff it out in the abalone shell, so it's always good to have that around. You can walk around with it. Of course, you can't go anywhere without candles. can never have too many candles. I have my perpetual moon calendar that I made myself <laughs> because I saw one on the internet, and it was available in New Zealand, and I couldn't have it shipped for whatever reason. I think it was an old advertisement and so I just looked at it and I made it myself so that was a lot of fun this is my great aunt's old diary Ooh. we gotta have herbs so in this particular box I have some lavender some nettle and some rosemary wonder what we're gonna do with that and then of course I have shell and some secrets in there and what's down below all right more candles we have some different salts of course we have to have salts we have some crystals there's a labradorite in here more candles mortar and pestle and then of course I have my tarot cards tucked in here I made my own pouch with a rubber stamp so there you go so that's the tour I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my writing desk and maybe were inspired to transform or decorate this season with things that you may already have and spend very little money I know with this whole movement toward having less and living with less um, I myself am a little inspired by that and I'm trying to make sure I don't have a whole lot of holiday decorations as clutter so most of the items that you see here i use throughout the house anyway um, as far as inspiration i do want to make sure i share i the grimoire of course is inspired by the movie practical magic they have a beautiful beautiful uh, book of shadows in that movie i've always loved that movie and i've always liked that book of shadows the spell box up top uh, that is totally inspired by the show The Witches of East End, and they have a very enchanting spell box in that show. I just love it. And then there are several um, YouTube channels that I just enjoyed watching. Uh, they, there are a lot of people sharing like Books of Shadows and witchy spaces and things like that, and I thought they were so much fun to watch. And I'll link a couple of my favorite channels below, uh, three in particular. Uh, the most charming in all of YouTube, I think, is uh, Rosie Moon May. And then, of course, I love to watch Amethyst, Amethyst, who makes her own journals that look like old books. They're beautiful. And then I love the uh, rocker uh, witch, uh, Molly, over on Her Speak. And I really enjoyed when she did a tour of her art room and uh, witchy workspace and all of those ladies inspired me greatly and uh, I want to thank them. So anyway, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later. Bye.